monsters for life as well. The men who made monsters come alive. Our inside story for today. The evil Count Dracula creeping up on an unsuspecting victim lusting for blood. Frankenstein slowly coming to life and strangling the mad doctor who created him. These are the images that struck absolute terror into the hearts of filmgoers during the 30s and made stars of Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. But as you'll see, life as a Hollywood monster would forever change things for these two actors. For one, it was a blessing. For the other, a curse. I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. For Bela Lugosi, the role of Count Dracula was a career maker. A Hungarian-born actor who grew up only miles from the real Transylvania, he seemed perfect for the part. Maybe too perfect, says author Greg Mank, who believes Lugosi became obsessed with the role. He would never go out of character. He would walk back and forth on the stage, look at himself in a full-length mirror, and he would throw his cape back over his shoulder, and he would raise his fist to the mirror, and he would yell, I am Dracula. Come. Yeah. Although Lugosi played the part on screen only twice, he became hopelessly typecast. And while he went on to star in several B-movies over the years, he was never again taken seriously as an actor. He spent the last years of his life battling drug addiction and destitute and died in a small Hollywood apartment penniless. At the end, all that he was left with was his greatest role and a dying wish to be buried in costume. His son, a Los Angeles attorney, says the family obliged. We thought it was appropriate uh, at the time of his death that he should be buried in his cape, and he, in fact, was. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! For Boris Karloff, landing the role as Frankenstein's monster at the ripe old age of 43 brought to an end years of struggling in anonymity. Critically acclaimed in the three Frankenstein films he made, he went on to become the highest paid and most prolific of all his contemporaries. Friend and colleague Vincent Price remembers Karloff as a man who had fun with being recognized as a monster. We'd go into restaurants together in London, clear the place. <laughs> We'd walk in, people would look at us and go, ah, <laughs> out. We got any seat we wanted. Everybody's a jazz. I feel like a dinosaur. Working well into his early 80s, despite being in poor health, one of his last films was Targets, a thriller in which he basically played himself, an aging horror star at the end of his career. Mr. Boogeyman, King of Blood, they used to call me. Box brothers make you laugh, Garbo makes you weep, Horlock makes you scream. <laughs> While his character seemed to have some regrets about playing nothing but monsters, the real Karloff didn't. Director Peter Bogdanovich says he was a man thankful for being remembered as Frankenstein. He kind of liked the identification with it. He said, thought it helped him as an actor to have that, and it kept him working. He was, as he said, he was very grateful to the monster. So while life worked out quite differently for Hollywood's two most famous boogeymen, the one thing that's clear is that moviegoers love their monsters. After all these years, Vincent Price thinks he knows why. Well, you know, a hero is a hero, and they come and go. They lose their hair, and they get double chins, and they sort of fade away. But villains just get meaner and uglier and older and nastier, and people love them. There's an ironic twist to all of this. Bela Lugosi was offered the role of Frankenstein's monster before Boris Karloff. He turned it down because it wasn't a speaking part. On our inside